Ready? What's up guys? Hi. I'm Joseph. I'm Jess. And this is? Fireball. Mr. Fireball. He's a first in ball. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. No, he's finest theater tons. This shows how much I know. Finest is first of all. Give me something new. I want it back through and through. Just do it. I'll let you Shows how much I know. Finest is first of all, but he's not first of all. What is finest? What is the mother side of finest? Well, Hang on. Finest is a young first of all. <laughs> finest is a young first of all that's been doing really well. Let me check the mother side of <laughs> Should we redo this intro or just roll with it? Just roll with it. <laughs> Weltmeyer, Meyer. Yeah. It's Weltmeyer. First of all, Weltmeyer. And, uh, and he's out of a feeder tons mare. His mother line is feeder tons. So finest feeder tons. That's where he gets his fire. He's right? so beautiful. Right? That's where you get the fire? Today we're talking about engagement and getting like mental connection with a young horse. But doesn't it work for all kinds of horses though? Yeah, it's kind of, with young horses, your problems are kind of accentuated. So I can still show you guys some tips and some things, even if you don't have a young horse, that you can apply to your older horses. It's a process, let's do it. I totally thought he was first of all. It's a good thing you have me around. <laughs> okay, so I've talked about this before in the videos, but the groundwork to me is so important because that's your establishing connection or communication with your horse. If your horse is running you over, then they're not gonna be engaged mentally. So that's kind of the very foundation, that they don't run you over, that if you walk, and stop, they listen to you, they respect your space. It's okay if he looks over there, but I want him respectful of my safe space. And if I use a little bit of energy, my hands like this, that means that he needs to back up a little bit. I can come forward and backwards. Use my energy and my voice. Little Get him backing up. If you think about the basics of dressage, so much is about the connection. And we think of the connection as being in the reins, connecting through their body back to the hind leg. But I think there's a piece of connection that's even before that. For me, that is like mental connection, that they're focused on me and paying attention to me. And that's where it kind of starts on the ground. So I'll, I'll do a little groundwork, a little that he moves around me and he bends and he yields to me. So again, using my space, saying, can you yield around me? Use my arms until he goes around me to the left. And I want to look in this small circle. He doesn't need to run away. Just that I can control him walking and bending. This one's a hot horse, there's a lot of energy, but I can get him bending a little bit and yielding the inside hind leg under the body. Like that. People often ask me about like connecting my lunge line to that direct rein, that inside rein. And for me, it depends on how you go about it and you have to know your horse. If 
but I like that because eventually I want to be able to take on the inside rein and explain to them that if they feel that rein that they give and they bend to that inside rein. Um, so that's why, there's a reason why I do do that. Um, I want to be careful that I don't pull hard enough that it comes through the, uh, pulls the bit through their mouth. Um, but it's, if you do it right, it can be very beneficial. Again, a little energy. And this is kind of the process that I use to teach them the beginnings, that this here, if I touch him there, he can yield to that. Later on, that's going to be my leg when I'm under saddle with him. Then I can teach him to bend in the body. His neck is beautiful, but it's short. And so I have to teach him how to bend the neck to get eventually rideability. He's, he's not under saddle yet. He's just a three-year-old and he's done quite a bit over there in Europe before he came over. He did the stallion selections. Um, and so he knows how to lunge and knows quite a bit there, but I'm trying to prep him to be able to ride and to get prepared for me to get up on him and that he's okay with that. That's all new to him. So there's a few things that I do to prep them for that, that I can have a more successful experience when I go there. And one thing I wanna show you is how to use your hand on their flank, because sometimes they'll have a tight spot there, and if they feel your leg, that's where they'll, they'll buck you off. If they get too tight and they can't move, then they'll get explosive. So I want them to be very soft when I touch them on their side, and you can, I don't know if you can see in the camera with him when I do, but he gets kind of tight in his body and then you'll see that he relaxes and moves his feet. And that's what I'm looking for. Let me show you. So again, bending and yielding like this. You want to be careful not to get kicked. But then you can use your hand here. You can see there, he gets tight. He might switch his tail. Be really careful not to get kicked there. He has to be bending towards you and that hind leg reaching away. There, so I can touch him here in the flank area, and then I can use my hand a little bit, pushing, push, give, push, give, until he yields over sideways. Just explaining to him what that means, what, what it means if there's push, give on his side, that means yield instead of get tight and push against it. There, yeah, like this, like that. Good boy. Again, I, let me see if I can move him so you can see. Oh. Oh. Here, come in close here. Right here. Yeah. Okay, so I kind of put my hand here and I go push, give, push, give, push, push. Until he moves, just like that. It's, all it is is doing is explaining to the horse to move sideways away from that pressure, which eventually will be my leg. Same thing on this side. Just take my, my rein here. Push, give, push, give, push, give, push, give, push, give, push, give. There, good, until he moves over. That's really good. Okay, now I'll lunge him a little bit. Horses, you want to try to find things that cross over to when you're under saddle. So, for example, me using my hand like that is something that then he starts going when I'm under saddle and my leg pushes there, he has some concept of what that means. The other thing I can use is my voice. So, if I'm teaching him to lunge, I can add energy or cluck to him to get him more forward and then use my voice for the downward transitions, ho oh, ho, oh, or brr, brr. Those, those downward transition voice commands, but then I can cross that over to where I, when I'm under saddle, he has some understanding of what those mean. 
then I can support him a little more. So try to get him to go around me here. And then I'll use my voice command in conjunction with my body language, my other commands to get him to go forward. There he's running a little bit, so a little slower. Oh. Right. And I'll kiss to him a little bit for the camera. There he picks up the wrong lead behind, so no big deal. I'll just go back to trot and get it again. Let's go. Okay, so the next thing that I do, and I do this quite a bit before I ride them. I'll get up halfway, teach them to bend, teach them to be okay, and then step down. What's good about this is when you're on under saddle, you're committed to riding them. When you're halfway up, if they get troubled, you can just step down. And, and it doesn't cause so much trauma as if you get bucked off and um, it really scares them. So you get up halfway, teach them to bend, teach them to relax, and then step down. Get up halfway, teach them to bend, relax, and then step down. Just go progressive and slowly so they're prepared to be ridden. Right, Fireball? Okay, we'll try it. Funny how the story goes, little hope of bigger dreams. Down, singing louder than the crowd. 